All right, we're back for another show. You know, today I've got Patrick Day with us. He's president of Professional Sports Catering, PSC as I know him, uh, from my yeah. days in uh, Fredericksburg, um, yeah. handling minor league sports teams all over the country, spring training, you know, um, you know, and he's, he's had a great career kind of running up through the minor leagues as uh, team president GM so he's got he's got both sides of it front office the uh, food and beverage so excited to have you thanks for joining me Patrick yeah th thank you Andrew it's awesome to be on here and I I, I, I really appreciate what, what you're trying to do for the entire sports industry with with with, with your reach and your energy yeah thanks man yeah. Well, let's give these guys and gals listening kind of a little bit of background, you know, on your journey. You know, how'd you first of all get involved in sports and then just uh, take us through your journey up till right yeah. now? Yeah, it's been, it's been a fun ride. Um, um, real simply, grew up in Massachusetts, went to college at a, in West Virginia at a school called Concord College, degree in communications and like everybody else. I was getting ready to graduate. I had no idea what I wanted to do. Absolutely no clue, nor, nor, nor did I really, I wasn't overly concerned about it. I always knew I'd be okay, you know? And um, I had to do a 200 hour internship and I, there's a team in Princeton, West Virginia, which at the time, it's an Appalachian League, at the time, I think this was like 1998, was the smallest city the smallest town to have an affiliated baseball team, the smallest town out of all 160 is what they claim. I think the population of Princeton is not quite 4,000. And I called, yeah, yeah, yeah. I called the general manager, um, voicemail. There's no email back then, or at least I wasn't using it. 1998, left him a voicemail and I got a, I got a message back on my um, answering machine, which a lot of people probably wouldn't remember. <laughs> What's an answering and, machine? <laughs> Yeah, 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 and that, that's how I got his message, and he's like, come to the ballpark Saturday at noon, whatever, you know, and I, I showed up and sat down with him, and he gave me a glorious um, unpaid internship, okay, um, and then gave me the flexibility to continue to work at a restaurant that I was working at, um, waiting tables, and worked every game, and I got $27.50 to be the official scorer during the games at a background. This is back before the internet. There's like a dial and modem thing that you had to do to get the stats off. It was quite a process. It, to get the end of the game box scores in back then, it, it took a good hour. And my title was like assistant director of public relations. But it meant that I was sending out the box score at the end of the night and writing a couple paragraphs on the game. But I enjoyed that. I, I, I got the taste of it. Um, you know, the energy of it very entrepreneurial which um always appealed to me and um just who wouldn't want to go to the ballpark every day i i and i tell a lot of my friends this i watched my dad do a job that he didn't like and i remember telling myself i'm i'm gonna whatever i'm gonna do i'm gonna do something i love um fell in love with it he put in a good word for me and i was a december graduate um Big shock took me a little bit more than four years to get out. I was gonna um, say, oh, you, you got done early. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 no, 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 I transferred. It was a transfer <laughs> thing. But um, I was a December graduate, and um, he, um, the Charleston Alley Cats in Charleston, West Virginia, were the big team in that state, um, and played an old ballpark at the time. I think it was over fifty year old ballpark called Wapal Park that got knocked down. And I got hired there, um, $800 a month, 10% commission on new, 5% on um, um, existing business, and um, no internet, no no CRM. I created a CRM. I didn't even know anybody. It's not like I went to college saying, hey, I'm going to sell tickets. Like, that's what I wanted to do. I wasn't talking about then. So I created a database, got real hungry. My, You'll appreciate this as a sales guy. So I did like a week or two of training with AGM and this is back. We had our sales list and you got a $75 gas allowance, little side check and you're expected to knock and knock and go 
grip and rip, you know, until stuff was sold. My first day out, I um, I went into a mobile home dealership in West Virginia, a mobile home dealership, walked in, and the guy bought a billboard off me. <laughs> Damn. No joke. It was my first day out on my own, and and I, I and it's, it's oh, this the is funny, easy. The, it, well, the funny story about it, how life comes full circle. The guy bought it because he he used to work in Stockton, California, for the ports. Okay, really? it's my first sale ever, and then um, here we are, twenty something years later, and and I'm doing business with the ports now, and so <laughs> and it's kind of funny. My first billboard ever sold. Um, and I remember like freaking out. I was like, what I did, you know, and he, he asked, he asked me about the art charges. I didn't know that yet. This is back. You know, like they used to paint signs. Uh -huh. I mean, we used, to, we used to pay like a thousand dollars a sign. These were wooden signs, old ballpark. And I didn't know what to do. And I like called the GM, <laughs> like I, I'm the guy's office phone asking him, did I sign the contract and done? So so that that was a pretty big thrill, like right out of the gates. I mean, they talk about that in a lot of business books. You know, get success out of the gates. That period carried me. I was hungry. I sold a lot of tickets. I I did really good. Did really good with it, and then just started to grow. And um, a couple like a year later, I was the assistant GM of the team. Um, real small thing, real small ballpark. Like I was telling you, old. So I was doing a little bit of everything: food and beverage. Um, staffing the whole, you know, ushers and ticket takers, running the cleaning crew, selling a couple hundred thousand dollars, you know, just everything at a real young age at like 25, got my hands and, and everything. And it was great. Um, so that's where the infatuation love came in. And then, um, put my big boy pants on and went to Montgomery, Alabama and, um, what was that? 2000, December of 2003, um, the biscuits, which was a, I would see, uh, my first year as the director of sales. And then the year after I was the assistant GM and, um, went down there, did the sales department with Sherry Myers, who co-owner of the team and, uh, and a great mentor of mine. Um, and, cranked out a ton of business. The biscuits were super controversial back then. That was that was one of the first times somebody went really out on a on a Tom went really out on the edge with the with the name. It was more more controversial than the lug nuts where the lug nuts were real controversial in ninety six too. So I got down there and you know, um thought it was a little bit in better shape you know you've done some startups and i get in the crm and there weren't as many tickets sold as i thought there would be and we had a lot of work to do on the suites and had like five months i was 27 28 years old then um and and cranked out a ton of bit and i ain't getting into numbers but baseball america team of the year two out of three years that i was there um super uber successful um and that that really got me really that really boosted me as far as my leadership skills and my um my growing my business acumen. Did, did they think, really yeah, did they really yeah. throw biscuits in the crowd? At oh those yeah, games? we had a biscuit get we had a biscuit shooter. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We had a biscuit shooter instead of a hot dog cannon. Yeah, <laughs> we we drive around and shoot biscuits and um. Everybody loved it once it started, just like all the other typical start. I mean, it's a yeah. funny story. We announced a name. I wasn't there, but I've heard a lot about it. I was still working in Charleston, but they announced a team like the July before. It's a big like Jubilee Festival. And Tom, the owner, gets up, got the mayor there. Everybody's pumped. Got the mascot hiding in the wings and they announce it. They announced it. And like, I guess it was just stone silence. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> like, I thought like, he was joking. Yeah, like three thousand people there, and like no, 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 no reaction. So, so that was great. Um, um, it was a really good experience, as you can imagine. You know, true entrepreneurial startup mode. Some of the people that I worked with back then are great friends still today. Um, we really made a good team. Um, it was 
Re really, really good. And then in January of 07, the GM left Lansing and the owners owned that team. They asked me to go up there to be the GM, which once again was, was great. I was 32 years old, run one of the I don't think it's arguable. It's a top 10 minor league baseball franchise. Um, uh, still putting up some pretty darn big numbers now. Um, and, but the, the brand loyalty in that market was off the chart. So it was a, it's a real, real big responsibility and um, something I, I, I absolutely loved. And um, up until now, it's the best job I ever had. Um, re really proud of that one. And stayed there till, so it's, the GM in Lansing from seven to twelve. Then I when left. Did they, when did the new stadium come there? Lansing was nineteen ninety six. So oh, okay. I caught it. My claim to fame there um, is I I I managed that through the Great Recession, which Lansing got pummeled. Killed, yeah. the, the, the car industry is bad. Unemployment was up over twenty percent. You're sponsorship sales guy general motor it was called oldsmobile park general motors had the naming rights the bankruptcy judge allowed them out of all their deals Damn. and to re redo a naming rights deal in february that, that, that was tough um and pretty proud of it i i did an interview what well, a couple of weeks ago and it was pretty funny to see that the the delta in the attendance from 2007 to 2012 was literally 4,000 people. Like it was like 354 and 07 to 358 and 12. So um, it was a tough time to run a business, but I'm really proud of the team that I had and everybody we had that we, that, that we maintained it the way we did. Now that I look back on it a decade later, it didn't feel that way at the time, you know, like it, 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 it didn't, it was tough. Um, um, you got all, when you got a lot of negative energy out there and there's a lot of negative energy, it, it, it can drag you down. But, you know, to look at that the other day, it's a pretty darn good accomplishment. Then I got a little burnt out of baseball. My wife and I had just had our first kid and I got approached by a headhunter to go take a job in the USHL um, in Muskegon, which at the time felt like it made sense. I could, I was still doing sports, still doing what I wanted. Um, but I think I had like 30 games in like six months, right? And I was like, oh, this is the unbelievable. <laughs> this is easy. <laughs> you know, five, 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 five games a month, um, great, you know? Um, and I got into it, and I, I just didn't, didn't have the passion for it. The people were great, um, good, 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 good people there, but uh, just didn't have the passion for it. And I had, I had got hit on the other end before about a job in Southern Maryland running an Atlantic League team. So I only stayed in Muskegon for I forget, six, nine months, something like that, then went down to Southern Maryland and ran, a, you know, in the, in the Atlantic League team, which is clearly the top independent league. And I think of any professional sports outlet, anything that's not affiliated to um, – uh, the the big leagues. Um, I think the Atlantic League's unbelievable, um, and went and did that, which which uh, gave me a new appreciation for the baseball ops side of affiliated baseball. Like I, I never fully uh, until you have to do it, until you have to um, put your name on the workers' comp check, and uh, um, and all the salary and all the all the travel money. Work. Yeah, 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 and I'll get to that my job after this one. <laughs> Talk about work. Um, so I, I did that. Um, Southern Maryland was a it was a great bridge. Awesome ownership. Um, a guy named Peter Kirk on that team. Um, yeah. who spent some time in Fredericksburg. Um, yeah. He, um, he owned that thing, and he, he he owned five teams in that league, so we had a lot of synergy amongst the the the, the various teams. And, was John Danos um, part of that? John Dan John John Danos hired me. Um, okay. John John Danos is my boss. Um, awesome leader. Um, great, great guy. I learned a ton from. Him. Learned a lot of sales. It, it, they it, did it, a good it, job in sales. The that group yeah. in general. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he was good. We, we, John and I, and I think he'd tell you, we had an auto, automatic symmetry with each other from 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 the first day we talked. I, I think he hired me within like 48, 72 hours. It, it, nice. it wasn't long from 
from and he called Tom, the owner in Lansing, and obviously he did a good job. Yeah, he hired me with him. It, it, it's quick. It's really quick. Um, went down there, loved it. Um, another nice challenge. It was it was humbling for me because I was spoiled with the brand identities in Montgomery and Lansing. I didn't really. Once again, another thing you can reflect on. You didn't realize how good you actually had it. Southern Maryland was a challenge. I mean, you're right in the middle of D.C., dude. Like. Yeah. Out out in the suburb, um, battling. Nobody really lives in Waldorf, Maryland, or, or nobody really works in Waldorf, Maryland. Right. Yeah. People live there, and they they shoot off left and right. Um, and it was hard. It, that 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 was hard. That was that was the first time I had to start making some really tough decisions on um, staffing levels. I, I had to get the thing right. Um, didn't fully get it there financially. I think turned around the culture and, and, the, and the brand identity of the team and, and grew some awesome employees there. And um, it, was, it, was, it was good. Um, executive of the year and um, I think it was 15. And then the league, um, Hartford moved out of New Britain, Connecticut to go to Hartford and that stadium opened up and I grew up in Western Mass, about an hour from New Britain, and um, it's interesting. And then the league was really interested and asked me to go up there and talk about a startup, man. Um, I got there. We got the keys to the building on January 1st. I met met the guy I had to meet, got the keys, and had one employee on January 1st. Showed up. He's an ops guy who I'm um, still friends with. And to build the staff, had no sponsors, had no database, right? It's not you, like played in, you played that year then? Started on April 23rd was opening day. Had no, had a, we knew who the field manager was being, helped me with baseball ops. Um, had a, the city of New Britain was putting in, I think it was a million bucks. I mean, that, that year is just a, a blur to me. Um, <laughs> hardest I've ever worked. Um, very gratifying that – the attendance wasn't quite there um, um, that everybody had dreamed and hoped of and, and, and thought it would be. Um, uh, but I'll tell you, and I've talked to Mike Pfaff, um, the guy that I worked with, um, he, he was my direct supervisor. And, you know, we talked a couple of weeks ago. I mean, just to sit back and really think about what we did to get a Get a fr- I mean, it was a legitimate fr- I mean, it was, it was not Mickey Mouse. I mean, it was, a, it was a real, it was a real franchise, a real team, real cash flow, you know, real, real everything. We, we, we got it going and we got through a successful year of that. With that said, um, PSU started a pretty big growth curve. Um, and Tom texted me, ooh, um, I think early December or something. And he's like, you re- you ready to come back to work for me? Question mark. <laughs> and I hadn't heard from her in like six months, like hearing from an old girlfriend. You know? and, <laughs> hey, what's going like, on? Well, <laughs> yeah, what's interested. Up? Exactly. What's up? <laughs> yeah, I'm not happy right now. Um, and um, I was like, let's talk. And we talked and growing like crazy. And um, even though I was the general manager of the teams and I was overseeing the P&Ls, um, I never actually ordered the food or, or, did the nitty gritty logistics. And he's like, Hey, you got some growth in the company. You know how much I love you. Um, need you to go on the ground and learn the business before you can, you know, hardcore before you can, uh, and then, you know, he didn't promise me, but he told me there's quick potential for growth. I got a friend, I had a couple guys that I was friends with in the company. They're like, yeah, come and do it. You can grow fast. <laughs> you know, we're, we're, we're growing. Um, I did it. I did a pretty wild thing. I drove across country um, and I was in Connecticut. My family stayed back. My kids had to finish school. Um, And I went out there in February and lived in the box office manager's um, spare bedroom. Him and his wife had just got married. Um, Yeah, I'm a ticket guy. We we hit it off. He let me run out his, his side room. And I went on the ground, man. I was working, I think it took like three days off in nine months. Um, I didn't have anything else to do. I, I, yeah. It didn't bother me. I, I wasn't tired. 
um, and did it. We did a we did you know a big number the first month out of the gates. A couple of huge concerts, um, a, a, a Mexican League soccer match, um, and then Grizzlies baseball. It's huge and learned a lot. Did that, and he called oh, me. Just and, kind of yeah. like a GM role of like a property, like yeah, for, yeah. Uh, food and yeah, beverage. Yeah. Is that kind of okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I did, and it was relieving for me. I'd been running franchises, so I could walk around. I, the GM and I from that team still talk two, three days a week. Right now, we're we're really good friends. I could. I could sit there without the pressure of having to run the franchise and, yeah, exactly. and, and, and relate to everything he was doing and sit there. So it was, it was, it was healthy to that point. You know what I mean? I, it, 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 it was not a bad thing. It was a risk. It was a big risk. It was a pay cut. It was a separation from my family. It was a whole new field that I hadn't done. Um, so it, it, it was a risk. I, I, I was, I was ready to take it and I did it and it paid off. He called me and, um, July, June or July and was like, hey, um, we're going to do some movement. Um, like you to move to Phoenix and oversee a region. Um, um, I know you can do it. It's all about leadership and people, which we can talk about that later. It's, it's really all, 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 all that we're in. And I went and um, I, I um, moved to Phoenix and oversaw two spring training properties. I think my first year was like eight or nine accounts. Um, fell in love with it. A lot of travel. Um, did that for a couple of years, and then um, this past October, I was named the operational division president. So, so I report to our chief operating officer, Jerry, Jeremy Goldblatt, and then our CEO and founders, Tom Dix, and then the regional guys report up to me, and um, then all of our accounts go to those guys and. And my main job is to really um, to try to affect culture, make make sure that we're staying consistent, make sure that if there's something that we're doing in one ballpark, you know, the other ballparks know about it. Um, but really, it's about leadership and culture, getting the right people, making sure that we're coaching and training people. I mean, that, that's what the sports world's got to be about, and that's what I got out of it. I got a lot of mentors in my 20s. Um, my, my mother hit the nail on the head. Don't, um, don't, don't, don't worry about money in your twenties, put your head down, walk in the building every day, work as hard as you possibly can. The money will take care of itself in your thirties. And, and I tell every employee that I hire, it's going to be a concession manager or a catering manager, first or second, big time, full-time job, um, hang with me and, I'll save you a hundred thousand dollars and not having to go to grad school and I'll, and I'll get you a, I'll, I'll get you a graduate degree in, in business. Um, and, um, really try to, we're, 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 we're unique. Um, we're, we're owned by compass group and Levy restaurants, which most people know Levy restaurants. They, they, they're the premier provider and, 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 and all, big league sports um, and, and special events. I mean, it, the, stu the stuff that our company does amazes me every day. And before I got deep into this business, I, I, I didn't get it. And um, yeah, we, um, we um, um, just, they let us do what we do, which is minor league baseball, right? Stay out of the way. We got to use all the systems, you know, it's not, our money anymore, you know, it's Compass's money, so you have to be responsible, but, but they know that there's a big scale difference between uh, between the LA Dodgers and Rancho Cucamonga Quakes, right? There's a, there's a pretty big delta there. Um, and I take care of the Quakes, and uh, 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 that's, uh, uh, that's what my job is, and it's to build partnerships. And the other nice thing about our company, um, you know, people can self up if they want, it's a decision that gets made in, in minor league baseball, but we got a lot of unique advantages. They can do a lot of benchmarking. All the guys that self off, I, 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 I get two questions from, them, okay. They call me. I got a lot of old friends. Hey, our per cap is blank and blank. How does that look? I don't give them that information. That's, that's part of, that's part of what you buy into. And then um, you got any people, right? They're scared. 
scared scared to lose. You know, your food your food guy flakes out. If your food guy flakes out in May or or March or anywhere yeah. in the vicinity, Any, <laughs> anywhere in the vicinity, yeah. you're in trouble. You are in trouble. Um, and and I, that's what our company does. I can helicopter in somebody, you know, the next morning to keep 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 the train on the track. And that's a lot of what I do. A lot of what I do. It's a little bit of whack a mole, you know. Yeah, yeah. I I think we I I think we um I I I think we minimize that. But there's a bit of that, you know. There's when when, when you're dealing with people, you're you're going to have your ups and downs. Um, and um, it's been fun. It's it's been fun. Um, and then we got into this year, and you know we we're revved up. I mean. I think you can argue for the professional sports landscape, nobody got affected. It, it's hard to compare, right? You don't want to say nobody's affected more or less. But everybody's been affected in some way. It's kind of like saying one person in an office worked harder than another person. I want to stay away from that. But but if you think about it, modern baseball carried all their overhead in the whole off season, right? You, you don't, I've Just always about said to get that it, revenue. I, I've always said it, Andrew. Like, and Tom, well, Tom taught me this. My first for opening day in Lansing, my first year being a GM. He's like, your responsibility on game days is to maximize the 280 hours that we're open. Think about that. You know, we're gonna do X amount of millions of dollars. We're open for 280 hours, 70 games, four hours. Typically, gates are open. Um, and yeah, so, so that's, um, that's, that's us, man. That's me. That's what I've been doing. So what, how, how many properties then are you over now? Um, technically our total portfolio, I think the total entity is like 34, 35. Okay. Anything outside of baseball or just minor league baseball? Um, just minor league baseball, we dabble in some soccer that's played inside the stadiums. Um, I got, we have, um, some major, I got major league baseball clubhouses. I oversee the Mariners clubhouse out here in Peoria is, is out here. Um, we do the one in West Palm beach too, but minor league baseball is what we do. That's what we benchmark. We're all a bunch of minor league baseball guys. I mean, um, and we got a mix of some guys that aren't either, but the, the, the leadership is, is primarily made up of that. So kind of like, you know, obviously, you know, COVID has really affected, you know, you guys, like what, what's kind of the extent of that? Like, I, I know, um, you know, no minor league baseball has been played. I know that some, some teams yeah. like are doing events and things like that yeah. to try to, you know, create yep. some stuff. Yep. 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 We're, we're doing it. Um, we're doing that also. I mean, like what we're talking about, yeah, they, they got hit harder than anything because carried all the overhead into middle of March and then no revenue. Um, and it's going to carry for a full calendar year. Um, yep. but we, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, we, um, we just try to try to go every, like it, what we're doing right now, it's hard. Cause, cause it's like putting a blindfold on trying, trying to, trying to bet what's gonna, what it's going to be like in April. Um, but we're still paying bills. Yeah. You know, like we're really good shape, but it's just a lot of admin stuff that we're doing. We're, we're, we're thinner and normal. We're talking. I think we're going to come out of this great and come out of it smarter, more aggressive. Um, um, technology, you know, we're getting caught up on a lot of the things that when you're running hard and fast, you always want to get to, but you can't get to. Like, we're really able to look deep at our playbook, look deep at our efficiencies, and, and putting out an even better product for, for people. So, we're working every day hard. There's, it, I'm working harder than I have in a, in a, in a long time right now, and, and it's fine. And I told our guys that I work with um, this past week, just in my opinion, buckle up. Come, 
December to August is probably going to be the toughest nine months of our professional career because when it comes, it's going to come fast. Yeah. Yeah. And, no, and it's going to come quick and it's going to be a <laughs> lot of high, it's going to be a lot of hiring going on. I mean, yeah, really thinking deep. Yeah. It's a lot of onboarding. Yeah. 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 Um, and yeah, I, I just trying to get ready for that. So how do you think technology will help you guys moving forward? And then, you know, does that cross over into fan experience at all? Um, I, I think, well, first off, there's a big run on cashless right now. That, that's a, I'm spending a lot of time on that. I believe in the upside of that. I think that does bring efficiencies to a lot more stadiums. It's, it's becoming, it's now social. It's, it's not, not that it wasn't acceptable because cashless had already started going out in, in, in sports arenas, but it was very much risky because not everybody um, um, has cards and some people are cash only folks, but now you can. So I think there's a lot of efficiencies. Or, there's a lot of upside in, in, in that in our business. Um, see a lot more self, self-serve marketplace type of, type of, and set up, which create efficiencies and product variety, um, is, is is nice on those. Um, so uh, that's that's a lot of what we're talking about. Um, and then I think suite levels are going to be different. You're gonna have to be careful on your picnic buffets and and how those are served. And nobody still fully knows. It, like. It's all coming down to local health departments. I mean, that, 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 say, that's got to be the tough part for you, you know, <laughs> yeah. overseeing, you know, and your regional guys, you know, every state or, or county for that matter could, yeah. could have different yeah. policies. Yeah. It's another advantage to, to being in the, in our company. Um, if you're self operating out there and you're dealing with all, all this yourself, um, you could expose yourself. We've got a really amazing risk management program and and leadership and collaboration i mean um and it's 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 benefited we've had a couple openings on rosemont chicago dogs and st paul um, american association played 20 some odd games um at limited capacities like 1500 maxes um and we we're able to set it up and go and um yeah, you can do it. You, you can do it. It's, it, it's going to change the face of it. And um, um, I don't think anybody really knows, but it, being challenged is exciting and we're all challenged right now. Oh yeah. Well, and you got, you know, you got to pivot a little bit and move around. Do you think like, cause I, I think on, on, you know, my side of things like, you know, sales and um, tickets, partnerships, I think more teams might be likely to start outsourcing some of those things a little bit more than maybe they would have before. Um, because number one is they're most of the teams are bare bones right now. They're going to have to ramp up pretty quick at some point. Um, do you think that because of this, that could be an opportunity for you guys as well to maybe more teams are going to look at, well, instead of, you know, Re, re-staffing up do we just outsource and go with the, the pros who know you know how to do this yeah I, I i think there's gonna be a bit of that um there's gonna be a bit of the flip side too people having to look at their p and l's and uh, yeah we got to do it in-house now yeah 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 yeah, yeah. it's both of it i think the, some of the smaller teams are looking at it that way some of the larger teams are looking at it the other way i mean it comes down to revenue and top line and what people are willing to put up with. So there's a, there's a little bit of that, um, but it, it comes down to our business is pretty simple. I mean, it, it comes down, it, it's a lot of work. It's a lot more work than people realize. And it's a hassle worth the, 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 the fee that it is to do us. Um, and I firmly, firmly believe that, that our services are, are, are valued properly. So how do you, you know, how is the transition for you? Like, you know, you kind of been, you know, the assistant GM, GM president of team. So in those roles, you're kind of, you're, you're there, you know, you're, you're right there every day. Um, now as the division president, you're kind of, you're, you're kind of up at a different level and, and you're very widespread. So how, 
how has that transition kind of been um, where, you know, you're not in, you know, the weeds of every single thing. I mean, you just can't be time wise. I love it. I, I, I love it. I didn't know how I would take to it. That was a big risk when I left Fresno to come to Phoenix. I'd never worked out of my house. I've been going to ballpark and waking up, getting in the car and going to a ballpark every day for 18 years. And here I am um, sitting out here in my home office in Phoenix um, with a lot of responsibility. And it's great. Like I, my boss said it the best, like, like, would I have to move or go somewhere else to go into a building? He's like, we don't worry about how, if you're working or not. And that's kind of the joke. Like our home office folks, they were making fun of me the other day. Cause I guess I went on a rip where I call, I call like all three people like in, 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 in a row. I, I, a little bit of the sales background in the group set in the group side background. I literally am on the phone with 75, 50 to 75 different people a day, Andrew. I, I, I talk, you know, that's what I do. I communicate. I, 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 I keep the trains on the tracks. I make sure people are talking and, and that's what it is. It, it, it's leadership. I, I, we'd be in a world of hurt if I was out um, inventorying CO2 tanks and buildings or, or, or walking around. like we'd be in a world of, of hurt if, if I had to, if I had to get down to that level and, and do that stuff. Um, um, and, yeah, it, yeah, I, I, I enjoy it. I, 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 I like working on my house. It's been different. The travel is interesting. I mean, I, I spent well over um, 125 nights in hotels, and um, last 19, the last full season we played. Um, it's a lot because you got it's usually three to three to four trips to each property inside a region through, through a calendar year. <clears throat> and I think I had 11 teams. Um, so it was a lot. I like that though. I got used to it. I, I miss it right now. I mean, I, it's stuck. I like, damn, I want to get out of the house. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't even explain it to you. I went from traveling and getting used to that. To, I haven't left. I haven't left. Um, I, I was in Stockton, California, the second week in March, uh, uh, the first week, whatever the seventh, eighth, whatever that week was, was the last time I traveled. How many um, regional um, managers do you have or directors? Five, f five guys, um, okay. um, people, um, one in um, Hartford, one in Charlotte, one in St. Paul, one in um, um, Dayton and one in Las Vegas. So how do you kind of, you know, manage that and kind of keep everyone motivated and, and just positive when everything is kind of like, there's no answers for a lot of stuff right now. You know, I mean, I, it really takes, you know, good leadership to kind of keep all that together. What, what's kind of your secret sauce on that? Um, it's, it's a good question. I, I'm fortunate enough to have real adults that, that are in those roles. And I don't, I don't have to sit around and give Newt Rockney rah-rah speeches to anybody, nor, nor would I, nor would that be the right thing to do, but it's just talking, um, making sure that they know that I'll support them and I'm doing, I, I help back them up is, and understanding what's going on in each other's day. And like I said, just making sure everybody's talking to each other and, um, um, and, and help out with partner conversations. I, I, I do a good amount of that too. Um, so it's, it's just staying organized and, and telling people what, what I know when I know it, you know, um, and, and just being transparent with, with everybody through the process and, um those guys are working incredibly hard right now because we are we are putting on some events like you talked about you have some movie nights going on some some virtual kitchens happening um some a lot of dinner on the diamonds you know we we have a chef of ours that put out in Pawtucket have been doing a bunch of those and Hartford's doing a really nice job with them um a lot of work a bot of money but they're um, they're justifying 
keeping people paid. So that, uh, 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 it's kind of what, what, what the goal is. If we can, if we can make the numbers work, um, then that, that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. And, and keep the guys. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. Do your regional guys um, go out and like solicit your new business or is that primarily coming from you or, or others or are they just um, kind of manage existing Tom, accounts? Tom does a lot of it. Um, our CEO and founder, um, he, 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 he does a lot of that. He's got, he, he's friends with a lot of the owners, you know, almost all the owners. So a, a lot of that comes from him. And then, yeah, we all know people inside the industry and, you know, I'll, I'll get, usually get a couple emails a month, you know, which isn't bad for, since there's only 160 teams, you know, hey, just interested, what would it look like? And we have, I have a partner, um, J Jeff Osborne, who kind of works on putting the deals together in the presentations and making sure we're asking the right questions so that everybody's going into a partnership, I, 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 eyes wide open. So it's a, it's a, it's a full team effort. My guys will go in a lot and check out the equipment, check out the thoughts of the stadium and the setup and, and, and things like that. And I know you said you guys are primarily baseball, but is there um, been discussions about like adding into like venues, like uh, arenas or uh, convention halls, you know, other? Um... No, Levy does that. Levy okay. has all those different divisions, right? They got major sports, they got convention center division, they got NASCAR, they got golf. They, they, they have all that. We, we, we are doing the minors. Yeah. minor league baseball that, that 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 is what we do that, that, that is our niche nice no i mean i i had a chance to work with you guys a little bit when i was up in virginia and guys were always uh doing a good job jeff's a funny guy up there so you gotta be genuine you know that that's that, that's what this is about and that's the other thing i like about milb too and i've always been hooked on it is the friendships and relationships inside of it and Everybody it's such a small free. it's such a small group isn't it i mean it's like yeah. everywhere you turn there's some sort of connection yeah 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 and there's a good amount of us that have been around 20 something years and might not know each other but you know you know the name or the, the name yeah exactly yeah 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 and you can you can pick up real quick and and find similarities and um yeah it, it's special it's special and i'm i'm proud to be part of it so anything else that you know you're kind of focused on on it you know, trying to drive PSC, you know, through this, you know, COVID thing. I mean, you know, that'll help position yourselves. I mean, I, I talked about it a few on a few of the shows, just, you know, you know, you got, you know, half, half the companies out there are kind of just like they, they went in hibernation mode and then you have other, other companies that are kind of, you know, either like you said, getting caught up on, on areas where you needed to get caught up on or, or trying to be more efficient and, and pivoting a little bit, you know, to position themselves. So as soon as it does open up, you know, you don't have all that, that ramp up time that, that the people yeah. that are hibernating have. Yeah. 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 It's going to be, <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. I mean, it's going to be a sprint. Um, but Hey, it's what we do yeah well, figure it out the good thing is when you guys get to that point when you're looking to hire people hopefully you can check out um my free agent friday series that's the series yeah. where people have gotten laid off due to covid some good people out there and hopefully we can get them back to work you know as soon as possible but um all different types of uh um you know, departments that we've, we've had people on there. So I'm sure yeah. when things ramp up, you guys are going to have tons and tons of uh, spots throughout the country. So you're going to have to. Yeah. Think. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll tell you, like, you don't have to have a food and beverage background in order to get a job in food and beverage. You got to be willing to learn. Don't come in and act like you got all the answers because it's complicated. You know, but if you're hungry and you want to learn and you want a job and a pretty steady industry, once sports gets up and going, then they're always going to be feeding people. Um, um, check me out. Send, send me a note on LinkedIn um, and take your resume and, um, and, and hold it and have conversations and 
I can give you advice too if you want to just talk about about the industry as a whole. I'm more than willing to help anybody. I'm a I'm a big believer in that. Um, any any young person out there that wants any advice or or any support, um, it's not much I haven't seen, and and I'll, I'll be a complete open book with you. Yeah, I mean, I think that's it's crucial that we do that. You know, um, you know, give back and help you know, where we can with those, yeah. those people. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. you know, it, it sounds, you know, you sound similar. It's, you know, even your employees, you know, you want them to develop and you want them to grow and, you know, that's a, a great sign of a, a good leader. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's what, it's what it works. Like I said before, it's a people business. Yeah. You're not, in the food, you're not selling, you know, you're not in the billboard selling business. You're in the people business. I'm in the people business too. And, and, and how you act and impacts others around you. And you got to be cognizant of it as a leader. Yeah. Well, I'll always be a fan because I like to eat a lot. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm going to check out, you know, some of the ballparks you guys are at, yeah, especially the yeah. ones in Florida. So it's good to know that you guys are down here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, West Palm Beach and Port Charlotte, the Rays, if you. Yeah. You I've been down. I used to live down in Southwest Florida, so I know uh, the uh, Port Charlotte area. All right. Nice. Nice. So no, it was great, Patrick. Thank you for joining me. It was great chatting with you. Um, yeah. You know, good luck. You know, as you guys are coming out of uh, COVID, but uh, uh, excited to watch kind of you know your guys' growth over the next. Yeah. Year. It, yeah. 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 And keep keep on helping out these free agents on Friday, Andrew. That's it. That's it right way to do it it'll, it'll come back to you yeah you know? yeah thank you we'll, yeah. we'll do cool thanks man take care